Hi, I'm Jack Dennis from Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Being a professional fly fisherman has given me a passport to fish all over the world. I get asked, where's your favorite fly fishing spot? That's an easy question. It's right here in my own backyard in Wyoming. I've been a fly fisherman for over 50 years. I've been in the business of teaching people to fly fish for over 40 years. What is fly fishing? To catch a fish on a fly rod, you must learn the art of fly casting, working the line into the air and directing it forward to a gentle landing on the water. Attached to the heavier fly line is a clear tapered nylon leader to which is tied a handcrafted artificial fly made from feathers and fur created to represent insects and minnows, fish food. What is the appeal of catching a fish on a fly? First, you must enter the fish's world and find where he lives, what he eats and how he feeds. In this concentration on nature, you become lost in the challenge and the beauty of fly fishing. A certain dialogue with nature is born. You are far from the trappings of civilization and the worries of earning a living. Your mind is clear and no one has as much fun as a fly fisher. <laughs> yeah! And I'm here to introduce you to the world of fly fishing for the Cortland Line Company. think fly fishing is a trout thing, but I'm here to tell you it's not. Probably the easiest fish to catch on a fly rod is bluegill or brim, any panfish. We're going to show you how to develop a cast. Cast like golf requires a swing. Here we call it a cast, and we're going to work with you on some foolproof ways of teaching yourself how to cast. Now. You're not going to learn in one day. There's no way. You'll learn a lifetime how to get better at fly fishing. But it's one of the few sports that you can enjoy without having to be good at it. The search for gaining more knowledge in fly fishing can be the most fun. Trying to catch a fish that you've never been able to catch before, like a big fish. You know, when we think of a fly rod, we think of maybe freshwater fish, but it's not that. It's everywhere. You can catch fish like a sailfish, tarpon, bonefish, bluefish, stripers, salmon, you name it. The ocean is a great place to learn fly fishing and can be quite easy if you find the right conditions. But to start out, we're going to tell you about the rod. The rod is probably one of the most important parts of your equipment. This rod here is made by Cortland. And we're going to also talk about the reels, which is a line holder. I want you to think of one thing. I'm going to give you several tips here to remember. This rod is no more than an extension of your arm. One of the hardest things about learning this sport is to unlearn some of the habits you may have picked up being a spin fisherman. Now, if you've never fished before, you're going to learn this sport a lot easier than somebody who's spin fished before. And it all has to do with the cast. But before we get started with casting instruction, and we've got a lot to show you in the few minutes that we'll have together, and you're going to meet a lot of my fishing friends, and they're going to help you in your quest to understand this wonderful and satisfying sport. First of all, the rod. They go from anywhere from $700 down to $50. Almost anybody can afford this sport. A rod is selected because it is a lever by length. We even make rods 15 feet long. We make rods as short as a seven foot rod. Now I want you to think, especially if you're going to be teaching children, a seven foot rod doesn't mean you're a small person. Seven foot rod would be used in the small stream, say like the Smokies, to get around through the brush. But you're going to want the leverage and at least start out with a minimum of eight feet. It's a graphite rod. When we're connecting this, we want to make sure that our guides line up. When we connect it, we're also going to be using what we call this is a ferrule, okay? An oversleeve ferrule. Connect it just like that. Cinch it down nice and tight. 
Now you see how my guides are all straight and all lined up. That makes your casting a lot easier. If it's turned even in the slightest bit, even halfway, just like that, it's not going to cast very well. It's going to be tough for you to cast. So we make sure those are nice and straight, nice and snug, just like that. Here's your weight of the rod. Here's the length of the rod. When I'm talking about weight of the rod, you can go anywhere from a 0 to a 15 weight. Watch how this bends. See that right there? See that right there? That's a 6 weight rod. That doesn't bend a whole lot. There's not a lot of give to that. Let's say I had a three-way rod, this thing would be bent all over. I could take that thing and I could pretzel it up. That's the difference in your weight rod. If you have a 15-weight rod, that baby's not going to hardly move at all. It's going to be real stiff. So that's the difference in your weight of the rod. The reason we use different weight rods is for different kinds of fish. If you're back home and you're fishing for little bass, little, little brim, little sunfish in a pond, you're probably going to use a lighter weight rod, more like a five, maybe a four, maybe even a six weight for some bigger bass. Let's say you jump on up and you go to saltwater and you're chasing big tarp and you're chasing, chasing bonefish, whatever you're going to do, you're going to need a little bit stiffer rod. Another reason that uh, there's a difference in the weight of the rod is, is wind. It's a lot easier to cast a heavier rod into wind, whether it's a six weight as opposed to a four weight. Get a little bit more, little more stiffness in that rod, it's easier to cast. That's why there's different weight rods. Now let's go on to the reel seat. Here's our reel seat right here. Back, I'm going to come here and I'm going to get my reel, and I'm going to show you how to connect this guy. On your reel seat, there's going to be two little inlets. Okay, here's one. Boom, your reel goes right in there. Okay, hold that there, and right here you got it. Up. It, it moves up and down. This is where you're going to pinch the bottom of your reel on your reel seat. Boom, right there. This knob right here, turn that all the way up, nice and tight, so your reel sits on there nice and tight. What you don't want to have happen is that if that's a little bit loose and you start casting and reeling, this gets loose also. You see how that's moving around now? That's what you don't want. That's why you want to make sure this is nice and tight. As you can see, this reel right now, my handle is on my left hand side. That's the way it comes. That's the way you're going to buy it. If you want to reel with your right hand, you're going to have to look at your instructions. Most guys cast to the right and they're going to reel with their left. That's why it's set up this way. I should tell you before we get going on this, that if you want this fly line to last you a little bit longer, you got to clean it. Very easy to clean. Some soapy water in a rag. And what you could do is you could strip all this line out, grab it like this, and when you're reeling, when you're cranking your line back on, you can hold that rag right here with your pincher finger, right there with your line, just like that. And you can reel that up, and that's going to clean your line as you're putting it on. That helps out too because it gets back on there nice and straight. You have a nice fresh start the next day when you're not Most fishing. guys cast to the right and they're going to reel with their left. That's why it's set up this way. Just a drag. Just like that. And you pull. See how much harder that is to come out? Just like that. That's the adjustable drag. Use that for the type of fish you're fishing for, whether it's a small fish or a big fish. You can adjust it before you cast. You can also adjust it while you're fishing. If it's a little bit bigger fish you catch and it's running, you can quick to adjust that drag while you're fishing. Kind of a nice little feature on a reel. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about too is you can palm this reel. As the line's coming out, you can use your palm as kind of a, a, a drag also. Reels need not be expensive, but it's always a pleasure to have a reel that's very, very smooth and will work. Just kind of a luxury. Now that you understand the rods, we're going to talk about the fly line because that's the next most important part because this line has weight to it. Now in spin fishing, we use the lure to launch and pull the line out. In fly fishing, we have to cast the line and that pulls the fly along. And we've got other factors like wind, as you can see a little breeze coming up here on the South Fork. And the line helps us because we shoot the line. We cast the line by holding it up, then shooting it. Having a good clean line is important. And I want to take you through the types of lines. Now, it's not going to be so important as you start in the beginning, but you should understand that some lines float and some lines sink, and it'll help you understand fly fishing a lot better. This here is a floating fly line. There's a lot of different kinds of lines out there. 
anywhere from a floating line to a sinking line to an intermediate sink line, all sorts of different types. This here, like I said, is floating. They also come in a weight forward and a double tapered line. Different types of deals there too. When I say weight forward, I'm talking about the front of your fly line is weighted, okay? It makes it so it shoots out, it casts a little bit easier. The back of your fly line, then it tapers off and it's not as heavy back there. That's the weight forward. A double taper is the same thing, only it's on both ends. This end's heavy, your front of your fly line's heavy, the middle of it's tapered off, it's a little bit thinner there, it's not as heavy, and the back end of your line is heavy. The reason we do that is people like, people like to take that and they, they like to switch that over so they can use both ends. It makes your line last a little bit longer. The reason we're going to use a weight forward line is because it casts a little bit better into the wind. The double tapered line doesn't shoot as well into the wind as a weight forward line. So that's why you're going to want to be using a weight forward line for that. The next thing we're going to talk about is the difference in a floating line, a sinking line, and an intermediate sink line. Like I said previously, the floating line is this. That's what we're using right now. Okay. Great for dry fly fishing, you can use it for streamer fishing, you can use it for nymph fishing, you can use it for a lot of different types of fishing. We also use an intermediate line, which is good for lake fishing. Cast well into the wind, it's going to land on the water, drop down just a little bit underneath the surface so the wind is not going to affect the line on top. The intermediate line also gives you more true action to your fly while you're fishing, which is essential for lakes. As a beginner, you may not think you need a sinking line, however, it's a good investment, especially the Cortland Fairplay that is very reasonable. Because if you're a warm water fisherman and going out to smallmouths or some of the panfish or even fishing some of the lakes, you're going to need a sinking line to get down to the fish. Especially if you have a float tube and you can get out of the water. You don't have to cast far with the sinking line and moving the fly in the water will be very similar to maybe spin fishing that you've done before. We've got to talk about some of the other fun equipment, and that is leaders. Leaders are a connection between uh, the line and the fly. You can see this line, if you put it on a fly, it will uh, be pretty visible. Leaders are very important. Leaders can be often the most overlooked part of fly fishing. And I think it's very important, because you can have a good cast, and if you don't have the right leader situation, you can actually end up spooking a fish or not having what we call a good presentation. What is a good presentation? One that lands as naturally as you can on the water and doesn't disturb the surface so a fish would be thinking you're an enemy of his. So what we've got to do is learn how to select the leader and what it's all about. Now as we learn the lines we call tapered. Leaders are also tapered so that they roll out. Let's take a look at leaders and what we call tippets, very important part of our fly fishing. We've talked about fly lines, a lot of people don't realize that a very important piece of equipment is the fly leader. This is the monofilament that we attach to the fly line and it becomes the connecting link between the line and the fly itself and it's a very important thing, it needn't be complicated but it's something you really have to give consideration to. Let's now talk about leaders. Like your fly line, it's tapered. And it comes in two styles. It can either be a knotted leader built in sections or one complete drawn leader tapered thick to thin. Now let's take a look at leaders. First of all, you have your butt section and that's usually separate a 25 pound or 30 pound heavy nylon. It's your coordination from your fly line to where you tie on your leader. When you buy a tapered leader you need to know certain facts. Now let's take a look at it. First of all, the length. Most beginners use a seven and a half to nine foot leader. It's a little easier to handle. As you get more accomplished in flat water you may even want a 12 foot leader. This confuses a lot of people, 3x. That means the diameter of your tippet. And what your tippet is, is your end of your leader. Just right here, where you attach your fly. So this means the, means the diameter of the tippet is 3x. And they vary in poundage by the types of leaders. This particular leader happens to be 6.5 pounds at 3x. Now here, <laughs> pay attention here, when you go up, to 6x and 7x, that's a smaller diameter for use with smaller flies. 
when you drop down into, say, 4x to 3x, then you're getting a thicker diameter and a heavier leader and consequently a higher poundage. When you buy tippets, usually you have to get a good selection. And again, you still use the same criteria. Nellis attaches your leader directly to your fly line with a nail knot. We're going to learn about a nail knot later on in the program. Somewhere down the road, you're going to need a new leader. When you do want to reattach that leader, what I would do is I would cut off your old leader, leaving about 18 inches left on it. Take your new leader, cut off 18 inches of your new leader, so we keep that same length of leader onto your fly line, and then reattach it with a blood knot. The blood knot we'll learn later on in the program also. I'm going to attach my leader on right now so we can get ready to go out and catch some of these fish. We're going to attach a tapered leader to our butt section. This leader here is going to be a 9 foot 6x leader. 9 foot means the length, the 6x is the tippet at the end of your leader, which is the diameter. Um, it starts thick and it goes down to thin, okay? The 6x being the tippet. The tippet is probably, oh, anywhere from 10 to 12 inches long. Once you use that up, Let's say you use all 10 inches up, you're going to have to use something else to make it thin again and to make it as long. That's where the tippet comes into play. Right here I have spools of tippet on my shirt. 3x, 6x, 5x, whatever I need I'm going to have right here. So then I can reattach the tippet to my tapered leader and make it nice and long and the diameter is going to be what I want from the start again. Now let's talk about stringing the line up into your, into your rod so you can get ready and go out there and start fishing. Right here where it starts with my leader. And a very important thing to remember here is doubling it over. I always double over my fly line like this when I'm getting ready to put it up into my guides. Okay. So we're going up in here. There. What's the one thing that always happens as you're stringing up your fly line? Okay? You're doing this, you're getting ready to fish, you're all excited, you see a big fish rising over there on the bank. Boy, I'm in a hurry to get out of there. I'm getting up in here and I, I drop it. This is what's going to happen right here. If it's doubled over, it's going to catch on your guides. If you're just trying to single, single line that thing up your guides and you drop it, it's going to go whoop, all the way down and it's going to take you another five minutes to get out there and fish. So now it catches right there. I finish up, I put it right up my guides. All the way up. Helps to have good eyesight here too. All the way up, pull your leader through, and your fly line down, just like that, and you're all ready to go. Now you're all strung up, those fish are still rising over there, and let's go get ourselves a fish. Real valuable tool, it's called a tie fast. It'll do a lot of things for you, but probably the most important thing is either putting backing onto your fly line or leader butt with a nail knot. And right now, I'm going to introduce Steve, and Steve's going to show you how to tie this tie fast onto a fly line, uh, both backing and a leader. I'd like to introduce you to a friend of mine, Steve Berry from Phoenix, Arizona. On my trips down to Phoenix every year, I love to go fishing, and I met Steve a number of years back and was really taken back by your fly fishing knowledge. But also, he's a pilot. He's a helicopter pilot. And uh, now I find out you're not flying as much, and you're the PR officer for the police department, right? That's correct, for the Mesa Police Department here in Arizona. So you're not going to make any mistakes on this tape? Right? I'm going to try not to. I'm going to uh, try and get it right. never been fly fishing, I bought my first outfit on my way to my first fly fishing trip. And... Uh, it, you know, it's been all downhill from there. I, should, <laughs> I should don't think so. I should probably be in some sort of 12-step program for fly fishing. <laughs> <laughs> You'd like to see more black fly fish, wouldn't you? Oh, absolutely. It's a great hobby. It's a great sport. I think just the fact that a lot of people haven't been exposed to it, uh, much like myself, you yeah. know, had I not had that friend that day that introduced yeah. me to it, I might not be fly fishing you know, today. I have, I have several friends out in California, actually presidents of their club, that got in it the same way you did, you well, know? I, Ironically, I am the president of the Desert Flycasters, oh which, <laughs> which is one of the uh, two largest fly fishing clubs here in the state of Arizona. We've got approximately 200 member club, and uh, man, that's a great way to get started in something like that. Okay, Jack, now what I'm going to do is go ahead and show you how to use the, the uh, 
High pass. It fits really nice uh, just into the cross, the crease of your fingers. It's got a great spot on the top for your thumb. That's going to be very important. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, my backing, lay it through uh, with my tag end hanging out the front. And I'm going to hold that. Then I'm going to take and start wrapping back up the tie pass tool towards my thumb, keeping those wraps nice and tight next to each other. Uh, I'm going to make about six wraps going back up, and then I'm going to use my index finger along the side of the tool just to hold that in place. I'm going to take my tag in and push it back down through the hole and pull it out snug while still holding everything else together. Um, I've got my thumb holding down the, the back end. I've got my forefinger holding down the front. My tag end's out the front. You can see all the wraps are nice and tight. Then I take my fly line that I'm going to attach it to, and I'll take the end of the fly line. And this is the end that's going to be on the reel next to uh, next to your back. Here. And I'm going to push it back up to the hole, and I'm going to stop. I'm going to slide that line off onto the fly line. Um, a nail knot is basically like the uh, a finger knot, if you remember that. Um, and at this point, you can see the the tie fast tool actually will come loose. So exactly the same way that we did this will be the way, and it is going to end up uh, looking like this, as you can see the monofilament and the. Uh, the leader knot. And this is done by a tool. Now, if you do it by hand, you're not going to have nearly uh, as much success. Now, most fly shops will do this for you, uh, but you may not be near a fly shop, so you should learn how to do it. Now, Steve's going to come in here and show you another knot, and then his partner in crime, Zinda, is going to come in and show you some really cool knots to attach your fly to the tippet or leader. my tippet to my leader. Uh, found it to be a very strong knot, very easy to tie, especially when it's cold out and uh, we're in those fishing situations that aren't always ideal. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to act as though the, the orange piece of fly line um, is my leader and the yellow piece of fly line is going to act as my tippet to it. Uh, the first thing you want to do is uh, save yourself a lot of headache and give yourself enough room to actually tie the knot. Um, I've been out on trips or, or been uh, teaching classes and folks will try and use such a small amount of material that they won't have any room to actually tie the knot. And all you do is make yourself crazy. Um, spare yourself the extra penny, give yourself a little bit of room and do it right the first time. So again, the orange is going to be uh, my leader, the yellow is my tippet. Now I've laid the two pieces of fly line across each other in opposing directions. And at that point, all I want to do is make an overhand knot while holding it all together with my thumb and being sure that the legs of the line all remain equal. You can see I've pulled that all the way through, and that would be my tip. Oftentimes at this point, one of the first questions my students will ask is, well, how do I know which end to pull all the way through? In the real world, that's usually pretty easy to pick up because usually there's a nine-foot fly rod and a reel and everything else attached to the other end. You'll know very quickly which end you're going to need to pull through. Um, I've already made that first overhand loop. Now I want to go ahead again while keeping everything equal, make that same loop and come through a second time while holding on everything and being sure the 